Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, I'm sharing with you a junk journal cover design idea. So basically, I have a diagram here and we're doing everything step by step. And the idea is for you to have a simple design that you can follow to recreate and create this kind of look for your journal covers. But it doesn't have to be just journal covers. Let me show you what I mean and what I've got here. This one here is a journal cover and it has this removable tag, a little cut out heart, it has a sentiment here. So that's a journal cover idea. You can follow the exact same principle, exactly the same thing for making cards, for example, or little booklets or little notebooks. You can sew in a little signature in here. You can have a little journaling spot with just clear paper on the back for some journaling. You can have this as your front piece for like an ephemera holder which is what i have here all sorts of fun stuff here and i have that piece at the front you can take this design idea any way you want you can change it to how you like you can add your own little variations we speak about all the steps in this video i made it really really simple for you guys and for myself as well while i'm doing this tutorial by using a diagram so without further ado let's begin I'm going to start off with drawing a diagram of this design and then we're actually going to do the project together. The diagram is going to help you kind of visualize and memorize how this is going. So the first thing you need is one piece of paper. Second thing you need is a second piece of paper. Next thing you need is a piece of paper with the heart shape that's cut out or any shape you can do a butterfly you can do a circle oval square whatever next thing you need is a tag next thing you need is a sentiment somewhere you know it can be down it can be up the heart can be bigger the heart can be smaller and finally some embellishments in the lower right hand corner and the upper left hand corner and you get all sorts of different looks. Okay, let's create the project. I'm going to start off with paper number one, the biggest paper, and I always like that one to be simple, nothing too busy. So you can see in my three projects, this one's not too busy, not too busy. This one actually here is kind of busy, so choose whatever paper you want. This is going to be my paper number one, and I'm going to cut it down to size. So if I, for example, want it to be on my journal, let's just say, I would cut it down slightly smaller. All right, so there's my piece number one. Next thing I'm going to do is the second piece of paper. I don't know why I'm numbering this, but it doesn't matter. So the second piece of paper needs to be slightly smaller than the first piece of paper. And I decided to go with this. So I'm just going to mark where I want to cut it. Okay, so the second piece is cut and you can see it's slightly smaller. Then the first piece, I have that beautiful border. Now for my piece number three, which is the cutout bit, I like to use the same paper, but it doesn't have to be the same. You choose what you want to do. But you can see in these three projects, this paper and this paper is the same. This paper and this paper is the same. So that's paper number two, paper number three. And the reason why I like it to be the same is because then the tag kind of breaks it up and it just looks quite nice I just prefer that look and of course you can see here as well same same so it, the heart stands out and I just like it but again it's totally up to you so first of all it needs to be I'm just kind of uh, I'll turn it this way so you can kind of see and I'm going to cut it perhaps it doesn't really matter how deep do you want the pocket to be I'm just eyeballing here but I do know that I want it to be narrower than the rest so that's what I'm going to do. I kind of marked. You'll see in a moment. Okay, so there's my third piece. It's hard to see because it blends in. So I'll turn it this way just so you can see. It's narrower than piece number two. And it's about maybe two thirds high of that piece. That's really more confusing. You can see here what I've done. Of course, that's going to be turned this way. So now what I need to do is cut out a shape here. And you can go ahead and do whatever you want. So this is my little template that I made. I just drew, hand drew a heart. I don't have a punch, a heart punch or anything like that. So I just basically, you can go ahead and you can just 
freehand draw a hat on your piece but it, that's really bad so I'm not gonna do that I mean this is also freehand but I took a little bit more care when you do that you just want to make sure that you have space on the sides so don't cut your shape all the way to the edge here because then you have no way to sew or glue if glue is what you're using so just for visual demonstration you can see here my piece you can see I have width so I didn't go all the way to the edge with cutting out the hat and here you can see width whereas this hat that I just drew on I didn't leave much space here all right so I'm just gonna disregard that and I'm going to use my template and try and kind of center it somewhere I also want to leave space down the bottom you know from the bottom of the heart I do like a little bit of space there so I think that will do and I'm just gonna draw my heart I might use this pen okay there we go so I drew my shape and now I just need to cut it out you want it kind of centered I am being thrown off by this previous drawing here but you want it kind of centered I could have left a little bit more space down here but it's all fine it really it doesn't matter and now to cut out the heart this is what I do because it can be a little bit tricky cutting this shape so I'm just gonna use my exacto knife go from one point to the next down here and then just do just create an opening there in the middle and then grab my scissors and carefully cut that whole piece out And maybe you know it might be easier to go from here sometimes it might be easier to go from underneath come back in and then you know whatever's easier but you just want really neat edges I want neat edges I don't know what you want you might want neat edges so just take care and now for this little last piece it's easier to come in from underneath and there's my little heart shape it might still look a little bit you know it might look like I just cut this out with scissors so I always love to ink those edges and that gives it a really nice finished look it just makes a big difference it can be a little bit tricky you know in these curved parts but it can be done and then this point here this very bottom point is really hard to get a complete inked edge just work it in any way you know how and it just looks better you cannot deny it and of course ink all the other pieces and when I say ink all the other edges I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna ink these edges as well all right all edges are inked we have piece number one piece number two piece number three that's what it's looking like so far this third piece is blending in but it's not completely blending in like look how beautiful that looks the next thing we want to do is attach these three pieces together so let's start with these two you can glue them together like this or you can sew around which is what I'm about to do so for some reason I don't know I just like to sew a little zigzag stitch down the bottom and up the top so you can see on this one I didn't go all the way around I just did a little zigzag stitch here down the bottom and up the top it's just an extra little detail you can do all four sides totally up to you okay I've done the sewing but because I was too lazy to change my thread it's very dark thread it kind of blends in you can barely see it but it's still serving as a purpose which is to keep these two pieces together because I've only used glue stick underneath that's not going to be holding on for many years so that's another reason why I like to sew on my project I think that's upside down all right so for this next step it's up to you how elaborate you want to be here you can just glue the three sides down so you apply glue onto those three sides and glue it down and you're done or sew it down it's up to you which is what I did here so you can see here there's no sewing around the house uh, the house the heart and I kind of I can't kind of demonstrate but that's an opening right there so you can do that and it's perfectly fine if you want to take it up a notch and you want to take it to the next step you can apply some acetate and sew around the hat so then that's not open here the bonus of doing that is that this little point of the hat is not going to be lifting up with the use of the journal or card or whatever 
you can see here if this gets caught onto something it's going to create a problem you can't glue it down because this is a removable tag i still think it's okay because there are layers here that are higher up so that kind of helps this be protected i hope that makes sense so it's totally up to you what you want to do here i really like the acetate look so i'm going to demonstrate how i do that i am using a transparency film i don't even think they make these anymore because nobody uses them anymore i found this in a second hand store you can use this you can use vellum you can use packaging you can use these acetate pieces that come from stamps any acetate lots of packaging toys and and things like that and pastas and i don't know lots of things come with this acetate window kind of thing and i keep all of those and that's the type of thing i use in these types of projects for this project like i said i'm going to use the transparency film so all i'm going to do is lay my shape on top I'm not cutting anything to size just cutting out a piece that i need and i'm going to take this to my sewing machine and just sew around just the hat once again you can see here there's no sewing so you don't have to do this step and also when you do so you can see my sewing is a little bit all over the place and that's okay too you know you don't need to have it perfect when you look at a project as a whole you can't see those little details and plus it's a handmade kind of thing i'm not striving for perfection so i'm just gonna go and do the best that i can i might actually show you the process okay let's do this i'm going to start sewing at that bottom point of the heart all right i did a double stitch and off we go just going all the way around let's have a look and here is what we have i have sewn all around that hat which you can't really see because it's a darker thread and it's all confusing at the back because of that first drawing that i did but you can see my sewing is not great it's all over the place but you know what it does the job and it's acceptable to me so now i'm just going to cut off all of the extra of that acetate so just following my scrapbook paper piece there we go just a quick side note i like my acetate paper to go all the way up to the edges of my piece only because when i'm tucking things in there's less chance of things getting stuck so let's say for example i just cut out a hard shape of the acetate when i'm putting that tag in there's chance of it getting stuck in between the two pieces i hope that's making sense so that's why i like to have the whole back covered in acetate now that that's done our next step is attaching this piece onto this piece so all i do here is i sew down these three edges straight through the other alternative of course is just to use glue because i don't care about the back of this you can see how secured those threads i'm just being very pedantic because these pieces are going to go on top of journals and i really don't want any threads coming unraveled etc so anyway because this is going to be glued on top of a journal i don't care that i'm sewing right through if you want this to be like a journaling card then you do your sewing before you attach these two pieces so you do you sew these two first together and then you glue this onto this one i'm going to go to my sewing machine and just sew this down stop talking already and there we go that's all sewn down and now this is my little pocket with that see-through window oh look at that just love it and that's the back so i'm really loving this so the next thing it really doesn't matter what you do next um the next thing i'm going to do is the tag only because that's going to help me determine how i want the rest to look and what flowers to pop down etc so i'm going to use this scrapbook paper for my tag uh it's changing the light a little bit here but i think it's going to look really nice when it's in there so now i'm just going to measure the size that i need obviously needs to be able to go into the pocket i'm going to do it slightly narrower than where my sewing is and also one more reason why you want to have this space on the sides is because if you have a really thin space here the edges of your tag might be showing through the hat 
it's not a very nice look so anyway let's get back to this I'm gonna cut this down there's my a uh, piece of paper I'm just gonna test it out you want it to go in easy we pull that easy what does this look like really like how that looks I don't, oh, I'm torn now what do I want to do I think I'm just gonna stick with this side why not let's do something different let's add some blue I always tend to go for the neutrals and the beiges all right so that fits in pretty nicely I don't know is it too tall it's too tall I'm gonna trim it down a bit more because I still want to add something up here and I don't want that something to be sticking up over the top of here so I'm just shortening this down I think that's pretty good and now I'm going to cut this into a tag shape so there's my little tag shape and then of course oftentimes I like to use these corners for all sorts of different things you know so that's an option too you know that doesn't look too bad ink the edges all right next thing i like to do is the sentiment here so we'll do this one as number five it's really quite simple i just get some tea dyed perhaps a cardstock and i'm just gonna cut it down to size just a strip of cardstock is what you need all right so that's about how wide i want it to be it really doesn't matter it can be narrow it can be whatever you want but i want it to be the exact same length as my very first piece and then we're going to do those little banner type edges i'm not sure what it's called so i just do a little cut in the middle on both sides just like that and then i you can do a straight line i kind of have been doing a little bit of a curved line for these ones do something on the back like a little curved line and do that on both sides there we have it nothing too extravagant do a little bit of inking you can play around with the placement you can have it all the way down here you can have it right there in the middle and then I'm gonna have something in there you can do rub bones you can do stamps I'm going to do something from this little pack they always come with little tags and maybe I can cut something up or maybe use one of these yes i think i'm going to use this you can leave it blank you can add another little blank piece like this this one here is a stamp so you know magazine uh, words for magazines and then you can i just saw this on my desk perhaps i can do a little layer let's do something different i think that looks better when i layer it like that and i'm just gonna glue it all down together so glue this piece to this piece and then glue this piece to this piece and then I'm not gonna apply glue over the whole thing because then it's gonna go on the acetate I don't know why I want to avoid that but I do so I'm just gonna turn it around and kind of just apply glue maybe I'll go to the edge something like this and then pop this down next thing I'm going to do is the embellishments these flowers here and here so I'm just gonna go number six at this point i don't think i want to be adding any uh, new colors so i'm just going to go with what i already have like a turquoise the thing with this step is you can spend 20 minutes trying to arrange everything you know so it's just so perfect and but it doesn't have to be perfect does it no it doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to come to the point where you feel like you're quite happy with your arrangement i feel like this little flower up here is so very lonesome so i'm thinking maybe i can add another couple of things what do we think so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm not going to take anything off i'm just going to lift them all individually like this apply glue and glue them down in place so i'll be right back all right here we go these are all of the little flowers they're all glued down stuck on and also here up the top and the very last step is the tag topper here number seven the reason why i like to leave this to last is because i want whatever i pop up on the tag to go with the flowers and everything else that we've done this is some tea dyed fabric i'm gonna cut a little piece just like that and maybe fold it something like this let's see that's a little bit too much so i'm gonna cut off more I think that's going to be a good height let's see so I don't want it extending over the top of the whole piece I want it around there somewhere and I also have a little brad ready you can glue that on you can sew right through I like to secure it with a little brad 
poke a hole where I want it, somewhere there. There we go, pop my bread through. There we go, and close the bread at the back. Perfect, and let's see. And there we go, this piece is done. You can see all of the beautiful details, a little bit of reflection there, that's okay. And the tag and everything just works really well together. I really love how this looks. And let's see if I was to pop it on my journal, I would glue it straight down on top of my journal like this. And there it is, a journal complete. Well, the cover at least. And now I have these four pieces complete and they're all following the exact same formula. Really simple and easy. I'm gonna pop this on screen so you can take a screenshot in a moment. But I really, really love how it's all the same formula. These look very similar because they're all similar sizes, exact same size hearts, all that kind of thing. But I hope that you can see how easy it is to replicate the same steps, the same process, the same design and produce different results. I love it and I hope you do too. Please let me know what you think. Here's that design so that you can take a screenshot. I'm thinking maybe I can do like a little series of these little designs, the same, do the exact same thing that I did today in a video. Do a little diagram, make a little project, give you lots of ideas and lots of inspiration, hopefully. Let me know what you think of that idea. Is that something that you would be interested in? I don't know. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.